Okay, so uh, today I'll talk about uh, another construction of lattice based cryptography, which is fully homomorphic encryption. So, a fully homomorphic encryption allows us to do the following operations. So, you, first, you have a message and you encrypt it using a public key to get a ciphertext, and then you can send a ciphertext to any third party to do an arbitrary commutation, let's call it F. And you get results, which is I've applied on the ciphertext of M. And by the homomorphic property of this encryption scheme, we have uh, F applies to the ciphertext equal to you encrypt the result of uh, F applying to the plain text. So you can, and the third party can send back this result, and uh, you can decrease using your private key to obtain the final result. So this is what FHG gives us. And uh, to describe FHG scheme, I'll start with uh, a very basic symmetric encryption scheme. The secret key is given by a vet, private vector S. And uh, to encrypt a message B, which is uh, 0 or 1, you first sample a public uh, coefficient A and a small error. And you do A times E plus A times S plus E plus your uh, message bit times Q number two, and by LWE, this term is uh, uniform random. So it access a uh, one time pad to hide your message bit to, in to decrypt it, which is very easy to see. And say you see the cipher test, you just um, compute cipher text minus a times s and get e plus. This is small error, so you simply test if if this is uh, you test if this is small. Then this means your uh, secret bit is zero. Otherwise, your secret bit is one. And this metric key uh, encryption scheme is already homomorphic in a sense. It's ad ad additive homomorphic because. If you have two cipher texts, C1 and C2, you add them together, you get the So this is uh, another random vector, A3 in, and this is another small vector. And this is the uh, addition of your secret bit. So this is already uh, additive homomorphic. And now let's see how to turn it into a public key encryption scheme. Know that homomorphic key encryption is a public key encryption, but you can also, there are also a symmetric key uh, counterpart. So the public key encryption is similar to this scheme, which well, the private key is still a uh, random vector S. This is same as S. And the public key is given by, this time it's a matrix rather than a vector A. This is a public matrix. And uh, this LWE sample. And this is something similar to here. And uh, to encrypt a message, We first sample a uh, small r. Know that r is a small vector. So I emphasize that uh, throughout this discussion, there are only uh, two entities that are small. One is arrow, and another is r. They are small, and uh, all other vectors are all large. They are in Q, and uh, r is in is a binary matrix of vector and E is some small error. And uh, the, uh, to encrypt message, we just output the cipher text, which is A times R, and uh, this second term times R, again, plus this message bit here. And I'll denote this by C1 and C2. And to decrypt it, 
we just compute let's say transpose and uh, s uh, times this will cancel out this term and uh, what we remind is So again, since R is small and E is small, the multiply the inner product is also a small term. So you test if this is zero. If this is zero, then your mass is base. If it is small, then mass is base is zero. Otherwise, mass is base is one. It's also similar to here. And again, you can also argue that this public encryption is also additive homomorphic, because if you and to see why it's additive homomorphic, I'll write another. So this encryption scheme has a, a, a succinct presentation, which is a matrix form. I can write the secret. I can write the secret key as. And this S is uh, the same as this S here. And the public key is uh, so you can check that. Okay, I'll just the cipher encryption is uh, sample R and uh, output so this is exactly the same as this I just write it in a more compact way And uh, then you can easily see it is uh, uh, additive homomorphic because you multiply to cipher text or you add to cipher text, which is So this is also additive homomorphic, but this scheme is not multiplicative homomorphic. And in order to obtain a homomorphic encryption scheme, we require it to be both homomor uh, additive homomorphic and uh, multiplicative homomorphic. And the reason why it's not um, multiplicative homomorphic is because you know, that this type of text is a vector and we can define what does it mean to add to vectors, but what does it mean to multiply to vectors? It's undefined. Well, you can see, uh, you can say if uh, maybe we can multiply each entries, but actually that doesn't work because, yeah, yeah it just doesn't work. And uh, the way we achieve multiplicative homomorphic is by suppose this we want this cipher test if it's a matrix then the addition is uh, addition of matrix and the multiplication is multiplication of a square matrix. It's well defined. So let's try to make the cipher test to be a square matrix. And again, I'll uh, see this is a PKE with a square, with a square cipher text. And this time, this private key, this is S, and the private key is defined to be and this S, and I applied many zeros to make it in, know that this is in M plus one. I applied like M minus and something like zeros to make it in ZQM. And the public matrix, I also part the zeros to make it, and this matrix is in, so I also part so many zeros to 
make it in a square, make it to be a square matrix. And to encrypt to encrypt a message, we this time we sample a square small binary matrix, and uh, the cipher text is given by. So and now this is in this is a square matrix, and you can easily check that the decryption. This is equal to. So it's similar to, here. It's, it's similar to, yeah, similar to here. You have a small error term. And this time the next thing is. Here you have S. What does it mean? So let's first ignore this my error term. You have uh, the secret key times the cipher text, which is let's denote this by mu. It depends on message, so I'll call it mu b. Um, this is mu b times this vector. So this S is actually the left eigenvector of your plain text of your cipher text. And the additive homomorphic also follows from this argument. And let's see why it's multiplicative homomorphic. Multiplicative homomorphic. So if you have two, the multiplication of two cipher texts, now this is well defined because cipher text is a square matrix. And uh, you left to multiply a secret vector. So this part. Since S is the left eigenvector of C1, this is equal to And again, since S is the left eigenvector of C2, so this is equal to So in other words, uh, the result of this is uh, you view this as a new message. I'll call mu, and you view this as a cipher text. See, so the multiplication of two cipher texts is the plan uh, cipher text of the multiplication of the plan text. So this gives you the multiplicative. Uh, Encryption, but there is a caveat since know that to, to derive this, we ignore this small error term. But this small error, if you consider the small error term and uh, plug it into this commutation, there is an issue because this C1, C2 is no, no small. Know that only E and R is small. So you multiply this small term with a big term, the new small term is no longer small. And there are some ways to get rid of the, this issue, but I'm not talk about today. Uh, so let's suppose that uh, we have a way to manage control this error term. And now what we end up with is, uh, is uh, I'll call it a somewhat homomorphic encryption scheme that allows you to do a bounded number times of additive and multiplicative uh, homomorphic oper operation that is Suppose your F is uh, represented by a circuit. So each case there is additive or multiplicative. You, uh, you start with a cipher text, and you can do multiplication and additive on this. But you can only do a bounded number of times. Uh, if we want to support unbounded number of times of commutation, um, so let's say after error, Steps, the cipher text is uh, the, the error term is at its maximum. So this is a threshold that we can we can decrypt the message. And if you keep doing this, we can no longer decrypt because this error term will accumulate. And uh, LL I'll show that once you have a, 
Once you have a homophone incubation scheme that supports, like for some sufficiently large air level of computation, and we can turn it into a homomorphic encryption scheme. So this is, uh, you start from a somewhat homomorphic scheme to turn it into a fully homomorphic encryption scheme. The way we do this is consider the following operation. So suppose that you have a cipher text which have many noise. <coughs> and there is some like trusted third party that can help you first decrypt it Uh, we encrypt this again. And output the ciphertext. So these two ciphertexts are the, let's say it's the ciphertext of the same message. The difference between them is this ciphertext gets too many noise because we apply too many operations. And this ciphertext is a fresh ciphertext which has um, a minimal noise. So start from this uh, fresh cipher test, and we can yeah. continue to do the operation. Now, we, um, it suffices to show we can do this operation securely without relying on a, like, a, a trusted third party. And the way we achieve this is by, suppose you give a cipher test. We first, we encrypt again to get the encryption of the encryption of the message. And then we run the decryption scheme. And I claim that this, yeah, this decryption scheme is actually a fresh self-test. Why is that? By the definition of homomorphic encryption. So if the input is, uh, if the input is, uh, this, you decrypt, you will get this. So if the encryption is uh, at a box, the output still gets a box. And this is actually a fresh cipher test. So this is called the bootstrapping. This allows you to start with a very noisy cipher test and magically get a clean cipher test. And all the all, all, all the intermediate results are all cipher tests. It doesn't leak anything about M. So the way we from S, uh, SGE to FSGE is you firstly you apply some operations and you do a bootstrapping and then you keep the operations after noise is big you then apply a bootstrapping. So you interleave a bootstrapping and the operation to get a fully homomorphic encryption scheme. Okay, that's all. Thank you.